I continue my series of reflections in Easter tide and to give you some news. Dear parishioners, clergy, and bishops, with no end in sight to coronavirus lockdown, we are having to plan ahead for provincial meetings to take place online. Already retired bishops are communicating on WhatsApp as are members of the Synod of Bishops. Other groups are encouraged to connect and pray together online and liaison bishops are meeting with bodies such as the youth, provincial organizations, and the like. Now, our legal team, the provincial executive officer, Venerable Horace Arens, and Mr. Rob Rogerson, our provincial treasurer, have worked out a way in which we could hold virtual meetings of Synod of Bishops and Provincial Standing Committee in September. More planning for the Provincial Standing Committee will take place in an online meeting of its service committee this week. As South Africa enters a new level of lockdown, we face a difficult path ahead. We are having to adjust to the reality that the virus will be with us for a long while to come and that to balance the need to save people's lives with the necessity of preserving their livelihoods, we have to relax some restrictions. Even as epidemiologists are projecting an increase in COVID-19 cases that will likely peak in late August or in early September. Our two leading experts Professor Salim Abdul Karim and Professor Kwarisha Abdul Karim said recently there is no way of stopping the virus from spreading. Instead, they warn we have to find a way to live with outbreaks, trying to flatten the curve when they happen while the, the government adjusts lockdown levels as part of risk-adjusted approach to mitigate the effects. As President Ramaphosa said in his latest address to the nation, adjustment will take place according to the rate of infection in an area and the state of readiness and capacity of its health facilities to cope with treating infections. For church, learning to live with coronavirus means developing our own risk-adjusted approach to returning to worship. Our recent weeks, or over the recent weeks, I've been heading a task team of church leaders put together by the South African Council of Churches which has done a thorough examination of when and how we can reopen our churches. The SACC has had constructive in, uh, engagement with government, at which we have been represented by the bishops in our Gauteng dioceses, and we look forward to an engagement on the conditions under which we can open our doors again. We cannot stay in lockdown in perpetuity. In the meantime, I urge you as parishioners to continue to give whatever financial and material support you are able to our, our ongoing ministry. Today, I joined a meeting of the deans of cathedrals in our church, and I heard of their challenges as well as the innovations which these senior clerics are effecting. I am grateful for their ministry. Another part of my rhythm is keeping up with young people. I am most encouraged by their posting this weekend and how they are keeping hope alive. 
At the invitation of Father Chesney France of Cape Town, I have shared two minute messages of hope to them and to hopefully help them to keep hope alive. The most distressing sight during the, these lockdowns have been the long queues of people lining up for food parcels. Hope Africa and a number of dioceses have been working hard to alleviate hunger and the Deputy Provincial Registrar, Kenon Rosalie Manning, has helped to access more resources as we partner in feeding programs. We also support the South African Council of Churches' efforts to advocate making food vouchers available, which both feed those in need as well as generate business for traders and support livelihoods. Despite the challenges, I pray that we will keep up hope for the future, even if, even as we work through the reality of the pandemic, however long it takes. Hope, as Denise Ackerman has written, is not that blithe sense that all will end well. Hope is about acknowledging our fears, dealing with the pain, the reality and the uncertainty brought about by the coronavirus. It is a journey beset with headaches, a journey with and in Christ, and during which we know for certain that he is not here in the grave, but he has gone ahead of us. Hope is the story of our salvation, our lives lived in the assurance that the one who calls us is faithful and will do this, as in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. During this time, I have begun to join Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu once a week in prayer and have found it strengthening. I urge you to, to pray without ceasing as we move towards Ascension Day. I want to invite and challenge you. What are you planning to do as we move into the next season of the church's rhythms or worship and celebration? God bless you. God loves you. And so do I.